What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Harmon. Today's video takes place in a small town called Brookfield, Wisconsin. At a Sheraton Hotel off of I-94 is where this tragedy unfolded. Inside the Sheraton Hotel is where a church called the Living Church of God usually had their gatherings inside one of the conference rooms. And on one particular night when there was a sermon going on, March 12th, 2005, one of the churchgoers, a regular by the name of Terry Ratzman, who was 44, shot and killed seven of his fellow churchgoers inside the hotel in the conference room where their sermon was, was going on. So on March 12th, 2005, Terry Ratzman left the Sheraton Hotel, presumably to go to get his guns, which were at the house he shared with his mother and sister. Um, again, Terry was 44 years old. Um, he still lived with his mother and his sister. Um, so he went back to get, I think, his guns at the house. Went back to the hotel and entered the conference room where, where the sermon was happening. Uh, Terry then sprayed about 20 bullets um, shooting and killing seven of the congregation members. Four were injured, uh, so he shot 11 people total. Seven died, and then of course he shot and killed himself inside the hotel as well. When I stumbled upon this article talking about a church shooting at a hotel, I was like, that's a very rare thing to, to see. And so I was like, you know what, I, I have to, I wanna look into this and see, see what's going on and uh, of course share the story with you guys. So Terry Ratzman again uh, was never married, 44 years old, living with his mom and his sister uh, at a house about five minutes away from the hotel where everything happened at. Um, he lived in the same house with his mother and sister that he grew up in. So it sounds like he never moved out, or if he did, he returned, I don't know. But either way, he basically lived in his, his parents' house all his life until he died uh, when he was 44. Um, he apparently served in the Coast Guard from 1978 to 1982. He was honorably discharged, so it sounds like he did okay in the Coast Guard. After he got discharged from the Coast Guard, uh, he started working as a computer technician at a company called Adeco. Terry was depressed a lot, and I think it's because he never found a wife. Um, he continued to go to church events, hoping uh, that he would meet uh, his wife, and so he was reportedly very, very depressed, and he was upset and pissed off about a sermon that the pastor gave about a couple weeks beforehand and supposedly the combination of his depression, not finding a wife, uh, just not enjoying life, and then being pissed off about the sermon that, that the pastor gave a few weeks prior, that was kind of the motive to him wanting to go in and shoot and kill several of the churchgoers. I think his initial target was the pastor, the pastor's wife, and the pastor's uh, child. That kind of was the main target, I think but he ended up shooting and killing several other people as well. So Terry Ratzman was carrying a nine millimeter Beretta handgun. He burst into the sermon in the conference room about 20 minutes late. He went through the back door and again started shooting. Uh, he shot about 22 rounds, hitting 11 people. And of course, seven of those 11 people were killed. The victims in the shooting were Pastor Randy Gregory, who was 50, his son, James Gregory, who was 16, Harold Diekmeyer, who was 72, Gloria Crytauri, who was 55, Bart Oliver, who was 15, Richard Reeves, who was 58, and Gerald Miller, who was 44. So those are the seven victims who were shot and killed in the conference room, of course, during the sermon. Terry Ratzman uh, shot and killed himself in the, in the hotel as well. Um, and then I just read some other stuff that I thought was interesting. So Terry Ratzman, a couple of weeks before the shootings happened, um, he told a, a hardware sales clerk that, quote, Sheraton Hotel is gonna be on the news. 
and that he was angry at the church. Um, so it says that on the day of the murders, he attended a part of the service, uh, but walked out during a part of the sermon. Um, supposedly he went to work, did all his normal routines, um, attempted to reach a former pastor he met in New Mexico, um, but uh, never got a hold of him. Uh, so then Ratzman returned back to the Sheraton Hotel around 12.30 p.m. Uh, for that service. He left again to go back to his house uh, where he changed clothes and retrieved his, his uh, pistol. Um, so after he, re after he returned again, uh, that is when he went in, shot and killed the seven people before killing himself. So it sounds like he gave a couple different warnings. Uh, one to a hardware worker that he was friends with and he was a regular at the hardware store. Um, but uh, no one, no one, uh, no one thought to do anything. Uh, maybe no one took him seriously, uh, or or something. But no, no one was called. No, the police weren't called or anything. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like seven innocent people, including the pastor and the pastor's son, all lost their lives, all because Terry did did not appreciate the sermon that happened a few weeks prior. Um, so seven people lost their lives, all because one man was pissed off about a sermon. Um, such a sad and silly reason to kill people over. So I'm gonna go show you guys the, the hotel where it happened at. Um, I will do my best to see if they'll let me film the conference room where it happened. I don't know if they let random people just go in there, but I will, I'll just see, um, just ask them if I can either view the room or take pictures of the, of the conference room where it happened. Cause it, I don't know, it just would be nice to to kind of see it in person and to show you guys. Uh, but either way, I'll show you at least the outside and then we'll see what happens. So just reading the article, um, I think I read it wrong. So um, it it was saying that three to four weeks prior to um, Terry Rossman shooting everyone, he talked, to, he talked to the hardware clerk about him being pissed off at the church and quote, you're gonna see Sheraton Hotel on the news. Um, so that happened three to four weeks prior to the shootings, obviously. And uh, I was reading that um, the sermon he walked out on uh, a couple weeks prior uh, to the shootings. Um, that that is the that is the service that he got upset at, and uh, that he was he was angry about. So I think yeah. So anyway, so that all happened a couple weeks prior to the shootings. Um, the day of the shootings um, is when he went to work as normal, did his normal routine, attempted to call. Uh, one of his friends who was a pastor in New Mexico, but uh, apparently his friend never picked up. Um, so that is when he went to the hotel at around 12.30 p.m., uh, went inside for a little bit, and then left to go back to his house, change clothes, um, grab his gun, and then he went back to the hotel and uh, was again 20 minutes late and then started shooting everyone. All right guys, so obviously made it to the Sheraton Hotel. Now the actual meeting room, conference room where where the event took place, um, it was called the Wisconsin Conference Room or Wisconsin Meeting Room. And that's actually the building right in front of me. But of course it requires one of those, you know, hotel cards. Um, so you, obviously you can't just walk in, you have to either be staying at the hotel and need the room or uh, or something like that. Through the window, I guess, but uh, unfortunately that's probably the best I can do. So one of these meeting rooms was the conference room where it all happened, um, down into this corridor. Uh, so, if, 
in case I forgot to mention, um, the pastor's wife, um, she survived. She was sitting in the middle. So the pastor was sitting uh, in the back left. The son was sitting two seats over and then the wife was sitting in the middle. And somehow the wife survived, the pastor's wife survived the shooting. Um, so it sounds like the pastor wasn't giving the sermon that day because he was sitting in the back with his wife and his son. Uh, so it sounds like some other pastor was giving the sermon that day. Uh, either way though, it sounds like Terry had a vendetta against the pastor from the quote, terrible sermon he heard from him a few weeks prior. Um, so it sounds like no matter where the pastor was in the room, it sounds like Terry probably would have gone after him and tried to shoot him, kill him anyway. It's just sad that, you know, six other people had to die um, for, for Terry's basically revenge or vendetta against the pastor. I um, forgot to mention, uh, this, this Sheraton Hotel is ridiculously huge. Um, so they got a separate building basically for all their conference room meetings. They have a, another building for ballrooms. So they have a couple ballrooms behind me where they have probably different dances or events and then the actual hotel. So it's a massive complex. I don't know if I can show you guys the inside of the ballroom, but Um, I, in my mind, I was picturing um, the conference rooms where it all happened. I was picturing it to be like inside the main, you know, hotel building. So like where I could just walk into the hotel front desk and the conference rooms would be somewhere down like a hallway right there. So I figured if that was the case, that would be so much easier to let, to let, you know, someone like me uh, take a picture inside. Uh, but the fact that it's a separate building with a separate key card if I went in there and said, hey, I want to take a picture of the conference room where the mass shooting happened, I don't think they would want to be, I don't think they would want that to be promoted. So I think that would be a, a strike one automatically. And then two, again, I'm a random person. I don't, I'm not staying at, I'm not staying at the hotel. I don't think they're going to give me a random key card to get into the separate building. Sorry that I didn't get in. At least you know where, where it happened. We're probably going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. Lots of other cases coming up. So if you're new around here and you enjoy any kind of criminal case type video, then make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell next to it. And uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching. My name's Harmon. See you guys on the next one. Take care.